interpretation of nonlinear models is a bit more complicated than interpretation of linear regression models, and there is a lot of confusion around this in the literature. Let's start with an example. So in the example we have an effect first that is constant. So uh, every each additional increase of education by one year increases your monthly salary by 300 euros. The average salary for women is uh, 2,000 euros, average salary for men is 3,000 euros. So the effect is the same for both and uh, that's, that's fairly easy to interpret. Let's take a look at another example. What if uh, additional uh, year of education increases salary 10% compared to the current level? So that's also uh, fairly easy to understand. Both uh, receive the same amount of, of uh, more salary. Okay, so, so where does the problem come from? The problem comes from that this is, uh, these tell us two different things. So uh, relative increase of 10% and uh, absolute increase in 300 euros are not the same thing. Let's take a look at it another way. Uh, 300 euros is 15% uh, for a woman and 10% for a man. 10% is 200 for a woman and 300 for a man. So the question is, is the effect of education moderated by gender? Is the effect the same? It depends on what we are, what kind of question we are asking. So uh, could be that we would interpret this as a moderation effect and we wouldn't interpret this as a moderation effect. Or it could be that we interpret this as a moderation effect and this wouldn't be a moderation. It depends on whether we are interested in the absolute increase or relative increase. And uh, then there is the further, the third scenario where uh, an additional year of education increases woman's salary by 12% and man's salary by 10%. So in relative terms, women's salary increases more per year of, of education, but in absolute terms, the woman's salary increases less. So uh, is the, uh, the moderating effect of gender positive or negative in this scenario? It depends on what we want to say with the data. And, uh, Typically, trying to answer a yes or no question relating to these effects is, uh, is not an ideal way. The better way is just to explain what the effect is like instead of trying to say that it's, it's either negative or positive because it could be either way depending on which way we interpret the data. So there's a lot of confusion uh, around interpretation of these is uh, moderation effects when you have transformation involved. For example, in this recent organizational research methods paper, uh, Becker and co-authors say that our transformation can severely decrease estimates of true moderation effects, substantial increase in type 2 error. That's simply not true. It's true that uh, if you multiply two uh, coefficients together, then after transformation, the, the multiplied coefficient can have a smaller effect. That's true. But when you look at the results and you interpret the result, the moderation effect is there. And uh, how you should interpret the results with, in moderation is always plotting. So the plots will look the same, but just the coefficient will be different. But you're not looking at the coefficients. You want to quantify the effects by, by plotting. And for that, transformations may not make a large difference. So, so why is there such confusion and, and where does this confusion originate from? Let's take a look at the, uh, the uh, normal regression model and then a regression model where we are log transform the dependent variable. So um, the predicted values here are just uh, beta plus beta 1 times x plus beta 2 times x. So that's uh, a weighted sum of the x's. So the predicted values here in the log metric are the same, but we are normally not interested in the log metric we are interested in the original metric. So we don't want to know, uh, we're not interested in how log of salary increases as years of education increases. We are interested in knowing how much the actual uh, amount of money that you get increases as a function of education instead of the log. So, so we'll do a little bit of math and um, the, uh, the predictive value of y is the exponential of the, fitted, of the linear prediction. So if, if the log is predicted by linearly, then uh, the actual value is predicted uh, by the exponential of, of the linear predictor. Then we take some uh, calculation rules from Wikipedia, which is a great source for these basic calculation rules. And uh, then we calculate uh, this uh, slightly different. So we express uh, the theta value of y. We can say that it's exponential of beta 0 times exponential beta 1 x1 
times exponential beta 2x2. The difference here is that uh, this is a, a sum and this is a product. So whenever you uh, have a linear model, all the effects are additive. So you add them after one another and the sum is the total prediction. In exponential or logarithmic models, you multiply the effects together. And then the, the product of all effects is the, uh, the final prediction. So you can see here that uh, we multiply the effect by x1 and x2. So that's kind of like an interaction effect would be in, in this kind of model. So it, it's not that our uh, moderation models are somehow incorrectly estimated. If you do a transformation, it's just that the model is multiplicative to start with instead of additive. And this is something that uh, many uh, researchers struggle to understand. What's the difference between multiplicative effect and additive effect. Let's take a look at this graphically. So we have here uh, the effect of x1 holding everything else constant. So this is a linear regression model and a represents the effect of all other variables that we uh, control for. And uh, now if, if the other variables increase, so if, if we say that we have x2 here and the effect of x2 uh, is something positive values of x2 increase, then a will increase and uh, these lines will shift up. So the lines will, will uh, have the same direction. The effect of each increase of each uh, unit of x and y is the same. It's only just that the base level pro, uh, increases. So the level increases but the slope doesn't. In nonlinear and multiplicative relationships, uh, the other variables a multiply the effect of, uh, of this exponential here, as shown in the previous slide. So the idea is not that these, uh, these curves are, are shifted up, instead they are scaled by a multiplier. So uh, this curve is, is uh, both lower and less steep than this curve, which is uh, higher to start with and then also uh, goes steeper up. So the nonlinear effects are multiplicative if you increase other variables that are held constant in regression analysis, then it multiplies the curve. If you here in a linear additive model, if you increase the other variables, it shifts the curve up but doesn't scale it. So that's the difference and this difference needs to be understood during the interpretation of the coefficients. The reason uh, why this model uh, or this set of results is often confused with an, uh, a moderation effect is that if you fit a linear model into this kind of data, then uh, the lines will go like that. So you can see that the slope of, of a line changes as a, a function of a, whereas uh, the a here is not the multiplier of, of x in, in the nonlinear model. So that's, uh, that's the basic case of nonlinear multiplicative linear additive models. So, so what, if, uh, what about the, uh, the SQR models? So uh, the SQR model is, is uh, non-additive and non-multiplicative. So uh, if we add something to the A, then uh, we can't say that we shift these S curves up and uh, we can't say that we, we make the S curves steeper because uh, they are, you can't change the shape of the curve and, and it is bounded between 1 and 0, so you can't really move it up, up or down. So uh, how should the effect of other variables be interpreted in this case? Well, uh, the other variables are, they are a sideways shift of the S-curve. So uh, the other variables uh, tell us how far along the S-curve you start. So the idea is that if other values are, uh, are very small, then we are far on the, on the left-hand side of the S-curve and the relative increase of uh, effect of our x variable is very small. If the effect of other variables is large, then we are further on the s-curve and the uh, effect of x on y is larger. Of course, uh, we can be looking at this part of the s-curve or we could be looking at that part of the s-curve. So this is uh, on the left-hand side of the s-curve. Uh, this is the, the left tail, it's very flat and uh, then it starts to increase a little. Of course, again, if we fit the linear model, we can see that the, uh, the, uh, the slope of the line is different for each different values of the other variables that are held constant in the regression analysis. So uh, 
whether or uh, and if, if we multiplied other variables and x together of, of, of course it would again be that they are not significantly the regression model but still the slopes would be different if we fit lines because the, the effect is nonlinear. There is still another important feature in the s-curve and uh, the s-curve is, is partially additive. So uh, we have the s-curve here, this is the logistic curve but the probability curve looks the same and um, we can see that between uh, about 20 to about 80 percent or between uh, minus 1.5 to about 1.5 this is approximately linear. So uh, the regression line if you do a linear regression analysis gives you almost the same predictions as the S-curve models do for this uh, 20 to 80 uh, percent probability range. And uh, that is useful because if your variables are the predictions are in this range then you can interpret the regression results as if they were normal regression results. But uh, even better you can just use normal regression analysis. If you want to just uh, if you have a curve that only contains this part then uh, just use a regression analysis and, and that simplifies your analysis quite a lot. So uh, we only need the S-curve when we're interested in this part that starts to flatten close to one or starts to flatten close to zero. Here's a published example of an unnecessary use of regression uh, of logistic regression analysis. So the authors are uh, interpreted uh, the regressions are uh, the logistic regression coefficients correctly by plotting them. So we can see that these these lines are not exactly linear. So this curves slightly because it goes over the 80 percent but but they're pretty much uh, pretty much uh, parallel lines and uh, you could have used regression analysis directly. So using logistic regression analysis when you get this kind of plots doesn't really make, make any sense. Of course if your reviewers tell that you have to use logistic regression analysis because your uh, dependent variable is zero or one then you can use it because it doesn't make a difference. The, the normal regression results and the logistic regression results are going to be the same at, at least when you uh, plot them. So they, the actual magnitude of the coefficients will be uh, slightly different. There is still another uh, nice published example about this and uh, here's a paper in a footnote. They are using a, a dependent variable that is one or zero and they explain that normally we would use a logistic model or probit model for, ones and no, for zeros and ones but in their case uh, there are the probabilities, the predictive probabilities are between 30 percent and 80 percent and this is the linear section of the, uh, of the S-curve so uh, it's easier to just apply uh, normal regression analysis. So uh, you have to realize that when the interpretation of the normal regression analysis and the nonlinear model would be the same then it doesn't matter which one you apply and it's normally easier to apply the linear model and it's also easier to interpret. Yet another example. So this is an example of um, a published example of moderation effect confusion done right. When we look at these uh, two different curves. This is uh, the, the predictive probability of, of patenting and this is uh, the firm age and this is the number of patents in a cluster of firms and this is the number of firms in cluster. We can see that uh, for younger firms the effect is positive and fairly strong and for older firms the effect is, is uh, pretty flat and not as strong for, for both these uh, scenarios. So we would say that the effect of uh, uh, size of clusters in terms of firms or patents has a positive effect on the propensity of patenting but the effect is uh, stronger for younger companies. So that's the proper interpretation. What's interesting in this paper is that uh, they estimated a moderation model and uh, the moderation uh, coefficients are non-significant, very close to zero. So this is for uh, the um, number of patents and uh, this is for the number of, uh, of uh, number of patents here and this is the number of firms in the cluster. So the effects are, are non-significant for the moderation effect. So when you're dealing with non-linear models you don't need to have a statistically significant uh, interaction effect to claim moderation. We can clearly see from the figure that the effect was different for younger companies and smaller and older companies. But 
you can't see it from this coefficient because it's a nonlinear model. They explain it really well. They explain that um, these coefficients are non-significant and they say that it doesn't matter because you, that you show it graphically that because you're looking at the different part of the s-curve the effect is actually a lot larger for the small uh, for the young companies than for the older companies. So uh, when you plot the results this is the predicted values the s-curve and uh, it's different even though the uh, interaction effect is non-significant. So it supports their hypothesis of moderation. There is, uh, there is no confusion. So uh, uh, it's uh, using a transformation didn't mask the interaction. If you interpret the model properly, there is a moderation effect. It's not, not uh, hidden. There is no lack of statistical power. You, you get the effect if you interpret it properly. So um, let's take a look at why we have these, these curves where one is a lot steeper than other one, even if uh, the uh, interaction effect here is non-significant. The, uh, the key to look at here is the effect of uh, firm age. So we can do some uh, back of the envelope calculation and get roughly that the difference between uh, the marginal effect of age is uh, minus 0 0.11 and the effect of 12 years difference 1 minus 13 or uh, 13 minus 1 is about minus 1.39. When we uh, look at the, uh, the s-curve, so this is for, for, for that plot here, when we look at the s-curve here and uh, how much is the difference of 1.4, so it's the difference from, from here to here. So uh, why the slope is, is uh, much steeper here is that uh, the younger companies are further along on the predicted S-curve than the older companies. So the older companies are here in the relative flat region and the younger companies are here where the curve starts to increase. So that's the reason why uh, we have a steeper slope for younger companies than older companies even if the effect here is non-significant and very close to zero. We can also uh, do uh, another back of the envelope calculation and get the average uh, marginal effect of age. It's, it's, uh, a bit, it's about the same here, so that's a small error in the calculation, but uh, it turns out that it's uh, minus 97. So that's the, uh, that's the correct effect. So uh, the difference here is minus 1.4, here is minus uh, 1, and uh, that explains why these curves are closer together than these curves. Because here, how far along the S-curve we are uh, for the older companies compared to the younger companies, it's, uh, the difference is less than what it's here. So what's the current practice in uh, interpreting logistic regression analysis results, or more generally, uh, nonlinear models? There was a, a review, a pretty good article about 10 years ago that uh, most of the articles published in management journals ignore interpretation. They just look at the, uh, the, uh, the, the direction of the effect and whether it's statistically significant. Then uh, some articles are uh, interpreted incorrectly, very few interpreted correctly, and, and the best, uh, best way to interpret is to do the plotting. Also, some uh, articles that do plot the effects plot them incorrectly it's quite common to see, for example, this kind of plots from logistic regression analysis. So you calculate uh, two predictive values for low uh, value of, of whatever variable, two different values for high value of whatever variable, and then uh, you draw lines. That's incorrect because you're not fitting a line, you're fitting a logistic curve. So the guidelines for interpretation is that uh, instead of uh, always do plotting and uh, when you plot you, you should really plot the, the s-curve. So you know don't plot a line because your model is nonlinear. Plot an s-curve. Use reasonable and interesting values. It's quite common that we use plus one standard deviation from the mean and minus one standard deviation in the mean. It could be the, the best set of interesting variables in some scenarios but for example if you are looking at old companies versus uh, young companies, then perhaps companies of one year old of age is an interesting uh, 
value instead of looking at a minus one standard deviation from the mean. Perhaps the, uh, the oldest company or the, the, uh, the 90 per percent, 90th percentile is more interesting than plus one standard deviation from the mean. Then you calculate the S-curves and uh, you should be drawing multiple S-curves from multiple different kinds of companies because the companies could be at different stages of the S-curve. So the effect could be flat for some company and it could be very steep for another company regardless of any uh, interaction effects in your actual model.